Act 3, Scene 6. Enter Lennox and another lord. Lennox, my former speeches have but hit your thoughts, which can interpret farther. Only I say things have been strangely born. The gracious Duncan was pitied of Macbeth. Mary, he was dead. And the right valiant Banquo walked too late, whom you may say, if it please you, Fleon's killed, for Fleon's fled. Men must not walk too late. Who cannot want the thought? Who cannot want the thought how monstrous it was for Malcolm and for Donald Bain to kill their gracious father? Damned fact, how it did grieve Macbeth. Did he not straight and pious raise the two delinquents tear that were the slaves of drink and thralls of sleep? Was not that nobly done? Ay, and wisely too. For it would have angered any heart alive to hear the men deny it, so that I say he has borne all things well, and I do think that had he Duncan's sons under his key, as in as as and it please heaven he shall not they should find what toward to kill a father okay um that had he duncan's sons under his key as and it to please heaven he shall not they should find what to word what it were to kill a father so should fleance but peace, for from broad words and cause he failed his presence at the tyrant's feast. I hear Macduff lives in disgrace. Sir, can you tell where he bestows himself? Lord, the son of Duncan, from whom this tyrant holds the due of birth, lives in the English court and is received of the most pious Edward with such grace that the malevolence of fortune nothing takes from his high respect. Tither Macduff is gone to pray the holy king upon his aid to wake Northumberland and warlike seaward that by the help of these with him above to ratify the work we may again give to our tables meat sleep to our nights free from our feasts and banquets bloody knives do faithful homage and receive free honors all which we pine for now and this report hath so exasperated the king that he prepares for some attempt of war Lennox sent he to Macduff Lord he did and with an absolute sir not I the cloudy messenger turns me his back and hums as who should say, Yol Ru, Yol Ru, R O, no, Yol Ru, R U E, the time that clogs me with this answer, Lennox, and that what, and that, and that well might advise him to a caution to hold what, di what distance his wisdom can provide. Some holy angel fly to the court of England and unfold his message ere he come, that a swift blessing may soon return to this our suffering country under a hand accursed, Lord. I'll send my prayers with them. They exit. That was the end of Act 3. I don't know. I think um, Lennox was just... I don't know. Something about... I don't really know yet. <laughs> so that was the end of Act 3. That was the end of uh, Act 3. That was the end of Act 3, right? Okay, we're on Act 4 now. That was the end of Act 3... That was the end of Act 3, Scene 6. Yeah, end of Act 3, Scene 6.